IOG's highly anticipated Lace Wallet is finally live on the testnet. Let's take a first look together. Welcome back to Woodland Pools. Today, let's finally take a look at the Lace Wallet. So this announcement came out last week. Alex, who's the head of product and wallet services and the lead on the Lace project over at IOG, announced last week that they were live and that the wallet is now available to test on the pre-prod testnet. So let's go ahead and take a look. So if you want to follow along, come to lace.io and we'll get started here. So we see here, try Lace on pre-prod. So on Cardano, the two main testnets are preview and pre-prod and the Lace wallet right now you can use on the pre-prod network. So we'll click on try Lace. We're using Brave, so I'm gonna click on add to brave let's go ahead and add the extension all right it's been added to brave and it's something i always like to do here is let's go ahead and pin this so we have it available and let's open up the lace wallet so a nice clean interface to start here this is kind of what we would expect from any light wallet these days where you can make a new software wallet you can pair your hardware wallet or you can restore a previous software wallet and keep in mind once again all of this is on the pre-prod network so you can't use any of your main net wallets here so i already have a pre-prod testnet wallet so i'm going to go ahead and restore but if you want to follow along you can either make yourself a brand new testnet software wallet or connect your hardware wallet. So go ahead and set your wallet up whichever way you prefer. We'll do the same and then we'll meet you inside the app. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a testnet wallet that I already had, but if you created a new wallet, your balance here will be zero. What you can do is go to receive. This will be your receive address for your testnet wallet. Click on copy and you can come to the Cardano testnet faucet and you can get yourself some testnet ADA sent to yourself. So here are the two environments, preview and preprod. We are on preprod. So paste in your address say you are not a robot, prove that you're not a robot. Okay, and then you can request funds. So you can only do this once every 24 hours and I first set this wallet up yesterday. So my rate limit has been exceeded, but if it's your first time doing it, you click request funds and it'll send 10,000 test ADA to your address. Okay, so let's take a look around. We can see here a reminder that we're on pre-prod, we are not on mainnet. Here, if we had multiple tokens, they would all be listed. Right now, I only have Cardano's test ADA, and I have about 8,000 of those. So I thought this is kind of interesting. For all of your different tokens, it takes the USD conversion and tells you the total USD value. If we come to NFTs, I've noticed here that for some of the NFTs, some of the ones that are larger files, it takes them a while for the images to load up and resolve. So let's give that a minute, and we'll come back to our NFTs section. And also, by the way, while that's loading up, I made some testnet versions of some NFTs that I'd made in previous videos, and I just minted these myself in the command line. But if you want to make your own testnet NFTs and play around with them, Alex was uh, telling Patrick, hope you don't mind, I'm sending everybody to EndMaker to make pre-prod NFTs. Patrick said, no worries. And so if you come here to studio.preprod.endmaker.io and you make an account, you can make some pre-prod NFTs and then send them to your yourself so you can play with them here in your test wallet. All right, so while these are loading up, let's take a look over here. We were looking at this earlier in our receive section, but I wanted to point out explicitly that it looks like Lace here is using single address mode. Notice how you only have one address to work with. I think this is fantastic and the way to go. In my opinion, there's no real benefit to having multi addresses. And so I always recommend people use single address mode. It just makes accounting and everything way easier at the end of the year and being able to track your own transactions. So definitely I think single address mode is the way to go. So that's really cool that that's here. If we go to send, we can paste in our receipt recipient's address here, but one thing I did notice that would be nice is it would be cool if we already had A to handle support. So I don't know if they're waiting until mainnet to add A to handle support, but a request to the Lace team, it would be really cool if when you guys go live on mainnet, if the wallet had A to handle support built in. So let's go ahead and just drop in another one of my testnet addresses here, and we can send a couple hundred ADA. And we see that we can also add some of our NFTs. We wanted to send those along. Oh, look, so it resolved here. So that's interesting. They're resolving here, but not here. I'm not sure what's going on on this page. But anyway, you can see here, here's the other NFTs I was talking about. So I can add some NFTs if I wanted to. I'll just take that one back off. So let's just send uh, 200 ADA. We can put a note if we want. Let's review our transaction. Enter my spending password and let's send it off. All right, so that is on its way. So we can see here the transaction that I just sent off is in the sending state. Cool, so it went through. So let's take a look at the details here. Here's the transaction hash, how much we we sent who it was to. Okay, another request for the Lace team. This looks like it's a link, but it's not clickable. It would be really nice if you could click on this and it would open up Cardano scan or something like that to be able to dig into the transactions. But for now, we have the details of it inside the wallet here. We can see the UTXOs that were consumed and the ones that were sent back out. If we close out of here, we can see the previous transactions I had on here. Let's go back to our NFTs. And yeah, it looks like now they've resolved properly. So that took a while, but they are showing up correctly now. So here's my testnet NFTs. We can see the policy ID, the asset ID, where the actual file is being stored. And this is 
kind of cool too. From the NFT itself, you can initiate a transaction and send it off. Okay, so that all looks good. Let's check out staking. All right, so here's our staking section. And yeah, same process as staking anywhere else. So, ooh, something I should have done a long time ago. If we come here to settings, let's put this on dark mode. Oh my God, that's so much better. Okay. Okay, so we've covered all these. Let's go ahead and look at some of the settings that we have here. We have an address book. This is kind of nice. Not all wallets have this, but this is nice. So for example, let's go ahead and say my Woodland Pools pre-prod CLI wallet, and we'll paste in that address that I just used and I can add it. Cool, yeah, awesome. So now next time, if I want to send a transaction, uh, I can go to my address book and do it from there. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's nice. All right, so let's go back to our settings here. Let's look at some of the other settings. Uh, yeah, so this obviously, as you're interacting with other sites, these are your whitelisted or authorized apps. I love that Hosky Swap is already in here on the list. Um, so here, for example, if you go to Sunday Swap or Wing Riders or Book.io or any of these other sites, Endmaker or anything, as you interact with those sites and they say, hey, do you want to grant access to this site? This is where that list is managed. You can come here and you can remove any of those if you no longer want them to have default access to your wallet. General wallet information here, if you want to view your public key for your wallet. So this one I have not seen before. If you enter your spending password here, this will actually show your seed phrase. I've not seen this before in any other wallet. Let me know down below. Have you guys seen this on any other wallet where you can do this? I've never seen before that you can actually get a view of your recovery phrase back from inside the wallet itself. Obviously, I know that they derive the public and private keys, but I've never seen before you can actually pull up the seed phrase again. So let me know if you guys have seen that before and what wallets also do this because I've never seen this before. Right. And so the last thing, for example, if I were to go and close out of here, and then open the wallet back up. Cool, so it starts in this tabbed mode, so that's nice. Let's go ahead and expand it though. But we see that by default, the wallet, when you open and close it, still has all of your information pulled up. And I know that with these light wallets, one of the first things I heard people request was, yeah, but how do I like log out or how do I lock it? So if you come here to your little avatar, you can click on lock wallet. And so now your wallet is locked. So if you were to like close this and open it back up again, and somebody were to come and use your computer, they wouldn't be able to just get into your wallet. So you need to open the extension again. You see, I can't do anything here. So I need to click on the extension, enter my spending password and get back in. Cool. So now we're back inside of our wallet. So this is interesting. I think I found a bug. Uh, I think that this is probably their default name for a wallet because I called this, how do I rename this thing? I called this my Woodland Pools pre-prod wallet. How do I even rename this? Yeah, you see how it's here? It says Flint Testnet. That's not what I called it. Hmm. For the Lace team, do I get a bug bounty? I think I found a bug here. Also, um, how do I rename my wallet? I think that feature may not be here yet. I know, for example, for the Typhon team, when they first launched, there wasn't the ability to rename it. Um, and then somebody asked for it, and they quickly kind of turned that around. So the ability to rename the wallet would be nice. But I just noticed that because it looks like the, the name changed to some like default that was in place. And then the last thing that I kind of skipped over, but I think is really cool, is you have this whole FAQ section here, where you can tell there's a focus on getting new people on board that may not feel comfortable with crypto yet. Like, what is an asset? What's an address book? How do I send and receive? I'm really glad this is here, and it's front and center. So all in all, really nice start. I know the Lace team has a whole bunch of other stuff they're planning on building in here, like decentralized identifiers, multi-chain support, uh, a dApp store so you can navigate different dApps from inside your wallet. Lots of other cool stuff coming. And everybody keep in mind, this is just now their very first release on the testnet. And if you want to give the Lace team any feedback as you're playing around with it, Alex shared a link to a channel in the IOG Discord called Lace Preprod, and you can chat with them directly about any kind of weird stuff that you might be running into or any questions you have about the wallet. I'm excited to see the fast iteration of new features. Let me know what you think about the Lace wallet so far. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.